I was listening to this podcast the other day with Kevin Kelly. I'm Kevin Kelly. I'm the senior maverick at Wired Magazine, and I like to package ideas. And he was saying that on his 68th birthday, he wanted to put down 68 ways to be better alive. Friends are better than money. A friend with a boat is better than owning a boat. He starts listing them off, and I realized what made the list so fun. Learn how to take a 20-minute power nap without embarrassment. He was listing, like, really specific things. Never get involved in a land war in Asia. There weren't many of those platitudes. It's like, live every day like it's your last. It was more like, don't, don't trust, trust all-purpose all glue. glue. Huge thanks to Setup for sponsoring this video. More on them later. It was recently my birthday. Yay. I turned 32. But the sting of aging was softened a bit when Kevin Kelly said this. Here's what I would like. I would like everybody to do one of these. I have a huge appetite for hearing people reduce or extract what they know into something readable and transferable. So here it is, my list. Maybe this will start a new tradition, who knows. 32 ways to be better at life. By Campbell Walker, age 32. And should you love this list, it will be available as a print. There's a link in the description for that artwork and uh, yeah, spice up your wall, I guess. One, never get drunk at a work party. Have you been the victim of unfair treatment by a business or a corporation? I learned this the hard way. I actually threw up on the CFO's shoes. What I have since learned is that in the term work party, the key word is work, not party. <laughs> Whoops. Two, don't click on rage bait. Just don't, man. I don't know, watch something good. Three, use your car for posture. What? I saw this one in a comment on my own community post, but yeah, someone had said that their favorite way to practice good posture was to sit as tall as they could with good posture in their car, adjust their rear view mirror so they could only see it when they were sitting up straight, and then never touch it again. Anyway, I started doing it and damn, pretty great. Alrighty, back to slouching. Four, if you want a face tattoo, wait five years. If the timeline of five years scares you, you're probably not ready for a face tattoo. Five. So one of my shortcomings as a human who interacts with other humans is if I think that a book would be really good for someone that I've just read, I fall into aggressive recommendation mode. You have to read this book. This book will change your life. And nine times out of 10, people just don't. Anyway, my new rule is if I am aggressively recommending somebody a book, I bypass the recommendations and just buy it for them. For less than like 20 bucks, I get to stop sounding like an evangelical car alarm talking about some book. My friend feels special because they got a gift. I feel like a really good person. Like, Man, that was real nice of me. Yeah, buy your friend a book. <laughs> Six, show sure one, keep a toothbrush at work. Seven, flower insurance. So this is a weird one, but as a renter with two dogs, I am constantly depending on real estate agents to give me nice reviews of how I lived in someone else's house. So for like 20 bucks, you can kind of not insure this, but massively stack the decks in your favor. Here it is. When you move out of a house, buy your real estate agent flowers. A lot of people in their jobs just don't feel appreciated in general. Flowers are nice to receive. And for you, man, those people are gonna have to give you references for years. But just wait until you see the three bedrooms, two bathrooms, and I'm a Kate. Assume everybody in the comments is a 13 year old kid. Smell what I'm talking about? That one's from Reddit, but I don't know. I read it and I love it. <laughs> Nine, invent games. So one of my favorite games, back when I lived with my old housemate, Benny, beautiful, beautiful guy, we used to play this game called Pizza Stab. So this is my stoner shit. But basically what we do is after we would order pizza, which was a common occurrence, thank you, Cones, what we would do is we'd take the empty pizza boxes, go outside, but we'd also take some massive, sharp knives. Then we would frisbee the pizza box at each other, and the idea was that the other person would catch it by stabbing the pizza box and it was sick man and we'd start doing tricks and we'd do like double knives double pizza boxes it was great nearly uh hurt ourselves one time pretty bad and we decided it was time to stop playing pizza stab what the obviously textbook stoner behavior but it's also some of my fondest memories so stab the pizza box <laughs> Actually, a sub tip on this one is check out the work of Jane McGonagall. She talks a lot about games, the theories as to why humans play them, and also all the benefits that games can give you. 10. If you're scared to check your bank account, your screen time, or what's going on in your body, that is a really good sign that you have to check it right now. How much money do you have? Trent. I have none, so I said nothing. 11. If somebody is using urgency as a means to negotiate with you in a deal, it's probably a bad deal. Here's a job offer, but you have to say yes by Tuesday, otherwise that offer's going off the table. Just let it. Let it go. 12. We all do it, don't lie. We use the chair or a floor drobe. I have to constantly reinforce this to myself. There is no transition area for clothes. They're either clean or dirty. They're either in the cupboard or in the laundry. You and I have a choice to make to do what is right or to do what is wrong. 13. If you think a compliment about someone, just say it out loud. <laughs> 
I like that laugh. Everybody's better off for it. <laughs> 14. 10% of people will hate your guts for no reason. Get over it now and save yourself so much anguish. Welcome to the trenches. <laughs> the actual number is probably way lower than 10%, but it's a really nice way to set your expectations. Here's some proof for you. Think of a book that you think has really changed the course of history for the better. Now go to Goodreads and read the one-star scathing reviews of it. Here's my personal favorite. Uh, Man's Search for Meaning is a book by Viktor Frankl who survived Auschwitz and he created this record of his time there, which is largely considered to be one of the most important cultural documents of our age. And here's someone's review. Too depressing. <laughs> That's the world, man. 15. It's probably my favorite. You never regret a swim. You just don't. If you're thinking about swimming, swim. Now this next one is the ad, but I do use it and it is worthy of this list. So hybrid. It's called Setup. What is it? It's a next generation productivity tool for Mac users. Basically imagine a library of all of these productivity tools, anything that you can imagine that is gonna help you in your computer life. Setup gives you access to this whole catalog. So if you are looking at a tool and you want it, you can just instantly download it with one click. And they're very useful. They'll do things like personalize your computer, clean your computer. There's this one that I love that has saved me so much time, which is a YouTube downloader. As somebody who edits a lot of video, finding a decent YouTube downloader is so difficult, but Setup literally solved my problem. It's also very easy to use. Like the other day I had noticed for the millionth time that I was getting very easily distracted. So I was like, you know what? I'm going to type it into setup, app blocker. Boom. I find this one called Focus. Within one minute, it's downloaded, it's on my computer, it's working and it's got me, you know, not doom scrolling for the next six hours. Thank freaking heavens, baby. And on top of the apps that I use, Setup constantly is updating its catalog with new stuff. If you are curious, you can check the link in my description. It'll give you seven free days. So you can, I don't know, see if you like it. If you don't, that's chill. If you do, that's chill too. It's up to you. Why wouldn't it be? Setup, organic tip and sponsor. Alrighty, next tip. 16. Should you travel overseas, try learn a few words of the local language. And the less popular this language is, the more this tip will hold up. I am so surprised by how much you can enhance an overseas trip by learning like six words. Honestly, six. Hi, bye, thank you, sorry. Something that means like great or amazing or incredible and then some slang. 17. If your grandparents are around, ask them about history and the past. I've been here since that time and I've seen the march of progress all the way. All five of mine are dead now, so I use Felicity's grandma for this, but yeah, I never really valued this as a kid, and as an adult, oh, can't get enough of it. It's just an incredible window into just a world I don't know. 18. Most of the time you can delete the word that from a sentence for a better read. Unless of course you're going for the casual tone of voice, in which case, chuck all the that's you can, baby. That, 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 that. 19. Three dollar discipline training. This is a fascinating one that I started doing a few months ago because I was like, oh, I haven't been that disciplined lately. So I went down to the servo and I was staring at the Zappos, which was my favorite lolly when I was a kid. They taste like grape and electricity. I decided what I'd do is just put one on my desk and not touch it. Every time I see it, I want to eat the Zappos, man, but I know that I can't. And it's just this little muscle that I'm constantly training. It's kind of like the car rear view mirror thing, you know, where you're constantly just inadvertently training your posture. But with discipline, which I don't know, applies to a lot of stuff. So yeah, less than $3 and might do something for you. Might not, we're all different. 20, invest in what you smell like. I'm a smellologist and this smells good. Definitely do this. I knew it smelled like teen spirit. 21, do off topic deep dives. Basically regularly learn about something that you would otherwise have no interest in. But you go full into the history and the books and even the YouTube drama that surrounds whatever this subject is. Some examples of some niche deep dives that I've recently done. I got really into feet, not in that way, more like in a biological way. Feet, for example, they have one quarter of the bones in your body, just in your feet. Other topics include the banana trade. That has captivated me massively. I also had a good couple of weeks where all I could think about was Toki Pona, a language that is only made up of 120 words. But yes, rabbit holes, do it. <laughs> Sorry, I got super off topic. 22, if you have a lot of locks, color code your keys. 23, if you're balding, shave it. Going bald is not something you should try to fight because it's a fight that you can't win. The best argument I've heard for people who are balding who need to shave it is this. When it comes to looks, you will often hear people say, oh, I like guys with hair, or I don't mind bald guys, but very rarely will you hear people say, I am attracted to bald ding guys. So if nature has begun to rob you of your hairline, just finish the job. Plus it just feels better and freer. Oh, I could talk about it forever. 24, start a quotes list in your notes app. 25. When delivering bad news, open with the bad news, then build the cases. I got news for you. You're going home tomorrow. Hot dog! Because we don't know what's wrong with you and you're gonna die. 
Mamma Mia. I heard this in a podcast. There was a business guy who was being a business guy. <laughs> That's what I've reduced him to. But this business guy was talking about firing people. And he said, it's awful, but when doing it, say you're fired first, then explain why. He said it was about order. Because if you flip that order and explain why before you drop the bomb, you give them points to argue against, and then you build up to your fired, and it's all just horrible and backwards. So, I don't know. Breakups, firing, bad news, whatever it is. Rip it off like a Band-Aid, then explain. 26. Install a chin-up bar. <laughs> You got a door, you got a gym. Check it out. End of tip. 27, wear the outfit that your body chooses. I'm a long time member of the Indecisive Club, especially when it comes to clothes, oh my goodness. Until I became a dad, it was the number one reason I was late to anything. It was bad, man. <laughs> anyway, because of this, I decided to develop some sort of rule. I didn't like the rigidity of a uniform, you know, when people like praise Steve Jobs or whatever for wearing that turtleneck. Nah, that wasn't for me. So I came up with a different rule. Whatever outfit makes my body want to move, dance, strut, pirouette, twirl, stretch, pose, vogue, I don't know, whatever it is. But the clothes that do inspire that urge to move, that's the outfit I pick. Weird? Yes. Applicable to other people? Probably not. But if you think I'm not going to put that in my list, then you don't know me very well. 28. Eat the weird vegetables. This is an odd tip, but I'm just going to commit. So you know when you're in the supermarket and there's always some vegetable that you've either A, never heard of, or B, never thought to buy? Tomato! I think regularly buying those and cooking them is really fun. Yeah. 29. Don't use Google Maps for everything. For whatever reason, I really value having a sense of direction, particularly when you're driving around a city. I really like getting my bearings. Maybe it was all those years playing Age of Empires. Who knows? There's this cool study that was done in London where they did MRIs of bus drivers in London and MRIs of taxi drivers. Now, the difference here is that taxi drivers in London have to basically memorize all of London, all the streets, whereas bus drivers, they had to know their route. What they found is probably what you'd assume. The taxi drivers had a greater gray matter volume in their mid-posterior hippocampi. Obviously. I have no idea what that means, but they translated it to greater spatial knowledge. So yeah, using your brain is good for your brain. Who knew? Huh. 30. Figure out exactly how much you cost to exist. This is one of those tips that I would always hear in like finance podcasts and reading books and stuff, and I just never did it. I'm like, yeah, it's probably this much. Then one day I got the urge, so I put all of my costs into a spreadsheet, just like Google Sheets, and I was like, oh, I cost twice as much as I thought I did. And looking at it, I was like, oh man, I'm paying for so much stuff that I don't use. Instantly I canceled that and then I did the maths. I just saved myself like $3,000 a year. So yeah, half an hour on Google Sheets might save you. Right. In sum, my world would be made fair through the simple step of eliminating all money. 31. Make a custom Cards Against Humanity deck for a friend on a special occasion. So I've done this for a couple of friends, either on their 30th or maybe they're getting married or something like that, wherever they're the main character. I put together like a DIY version of Cards Against Humanity, but all of the questions are about that person. And they're not great, they're just kind of like laminated bits of paper. For example, my buddy Rick recently turned 30 and he has a third nipple. So the question was, Rick has given that third nipple a nickname. What is it? Anyway, I'll usually make like 30 of them and I'll do like some design of their face on the other side. Kind of, I don't know. Put in a bit of effort and it's fun, man. It's just like a fun thing to do. And the final tip, 32. Never underestimate the power of a good walk. Obviously using your legs isn't available to everybody, but it is available to most of us and walking. Whew, maybe this is my last name talking, but damn, it can clean up your mind. So if nothing on this list resonated and you were currently disappointed and you're like, damn it, I want it to feel better. If your legs are working, give it a shot. It's a little blocky. Alrighty, that's the list, man. Advice is like little hats that you try on. They aren't rules. They aren't meant to be infallible. They're meant to be useful. And if it isn't useful, just forget about them. Thanks for watching. Subscribe if you're new. If you like this list and want to immortalize it through some colorful artwork, then check out the link for the print in the description. Thanks again, Setup. Alrighty, have a beautiful day. Gotcha.